Now let's go to page 24 where it has it on there because you got to go through a few pages to get to it. And it's got all kinds of side effects, people. I mean, I'm, I'm getting to page 24 of these. Woo, a lot of side effects. I'm almost there. It's just got a lot you got to go through. Some are, aren't that big a deal, like foot deformity, you know. So, oh, oh, mental impairment disorders, event, autism. How many events? Two. Total two. So they're, they're mentioning right there that there's two different adverse events of autism. But there's more. If you go to Appendix 4E, cumulative tabulation of all unlisted events from serious unlisted spontaneous reports to and all serious unlisted reactions from clinical trial cases reported since launch. So this is getting them from a, a couple different lists, from clinical trials and from other lists that they were conducting. Uh, and you can see what it says up here, the uh, number of adverse events and level of seriousness. That you can find on page 544. Well, you go to page 578, autism. Number of events, five, serious, yes. Here's another autism. Well, it wasn't too serious. You know, it was just one that wasn't too serious, but we had five that were pretty serious. Nothing to worry about, though. Now let's continue on. Page 584. Here it is again, listed under a psychiatric disorder. Unlike here, it's a nervous system disorder right there, nervous system disorder. So, and then there's other tables where it lists uh, autism. Um, you know, you could go through and read them all. Uh, it gets actually here. And here it lists infrarex hexa, female, five months old. She gets autism, epilepsy, and a developmental delay. The case outcomes unresolved. It was reported that diagnosis confirmed, but no data provided. So there it is. Here's the signed cover sheet by the doctor. You can see for yourself. Go to the Natural News article. We're going to put it back up on screen. You can see the signature. Dr. Felix Arlano, MD, Vice President, Head Biological Clinical Safety and Pharmacovigilance of GlaxoSmithKline. They're keeping all the records, okay? They know it causes autism. They know it, but they don't want you to know it. So they have these congressional hearings where they get doctors up here that are, that are most likely, when they get out of the CDC, are going to go get jobs working for these vaccine companies. And they're going to keep pushing them. They're going to keep making more lists of it. And I didn't even talk about all the other adverse events, like the epilepsy and, and the encephalophy encephalophy, whatever that is, encephalophy. I can't even say all these words, but that's where your head, you're having uh, tremors and your head expands and, and it starts to swell. I mean, it's horrible the things that these vaccines cause. Yeah, we got to put, put up with all these damn cartoons and these reports that come out and all this fake news that vaccines are good for you and that we have to have them. It's a total bunch of BS and it really pisses me off. And another great video, and I want to remind all you guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, Please subscribe to the channel, and you can get all the great videos. Over a million viewers now, yeah. subscribers to the site. It's a great time to be an info warrior. And also, if you're watching this video on YouTube, go down to the description, and you can see all of the links. So you can see these original things in their entirety. Some of them had to be shaved down a little bit, but you send can send these see reports the, out. Send these yes. reports out to people you know. Spread the word. Help these videos grow. It it increases the the awareness of what's exactly. really going on in this country, and it's stuff you're not going to see on the mainstream media. They're, Absolutely not, because the mainstream not. media is going to make fun of you right. if you dare question the vaccines. And I did a report earlier this year myself talking about how these late night guys, they want to poke fun at you if you're a parent who dares question vac vaccines, even though we've seen the kids in Syria die after taking the vaccines. We've seen the kids in Mexico die mm -hmm. after taking the vaccines. And, and then they put you on Katie Couric right next to the girl who has uh, the very serious uh, condition after taking the vaccines. And she's the doctor's like, oh, well, it's so rare. It's it's a very, uh, you know, I'm it's like. It's so rare, but your kids aren't yeah, taking them. Yeah, you know, so it's it's completely ridiculous. We see Dr. Oz and some of these other mm -hmm. guys not taking these vaccines. So definitely be aware of this and also check out all these reports. Now we're going to end tonight with this. This is a special report actually done by Leanne McAdoo and Josh Owens. World's oldest World War II veteran speaks out. This is Richard Overton. He's a very nice gentleman who lives right here in the city of Austin, Texas. And before we go to this, Joe Biggs, Let's, let's say you're 100 years old. You know, Joe Biggs is 100 years old. Can you even fathom what the world is going to be like so many years from now? I mean, like you said, with the, the aborted baby, uh, babies being used, uh, the organs and all that, the, the fact, I mean, by the time I'm 100, 
I mean, we should be floating by then, like in cars. I mean, we wouldn't have driverless cars. Or just cars. your head. Well, yeah. <laughs> It'd be like Mars attacks or something. <laughs> I, I'm kind of uh, fearful for that far away, just the way things are kind of spiraling out of control so rapidly. I mean, it, it, I just, I don't know if it's one of the things I'm looking forward to at this moment in time. All right. Fair well, that's, I'll say this. You know, technology has always been kind of ahead of where humans want to be. You know, people are always pushing the bound, and I think we should be pushing the boundaries of technology. But we also need to be having those discussions of, is this the right way to go with the technology, especially with robots? And how much, how many robots do we want out there replacing? I mean, we dogs? really have a system out there called Skynet. Yeah, yeah, yeah Skynet is real. <laughs> it's, real. It's, it's not just in the Terminator movies; it is very much real. It is real. It's for, it, it's totally crazy. But yeah, and what I'll be in sixty years, I'll be a hundred, and uh, you know, I. Hopefully we have flying cars by then because I've been waiting for flying cars since I was a little boy. The Jetsons. Boy. Yeah, I've been waiting for something like that. Now we're seeing guys make, uh, you know, hover scooters and stuff like that. And I, I want to see more of that, that type of technology yeah, that's that frees good. us from, you know, the traffic. I, I can't stand traffic. I'm, hopefully we'll have traffic beat by them, but they'll probably do it with these damn uh, driverless vehicles. <laughs> yeah, it makes everything more efficient. So this is the world's oldest World War, world war II veteran. He speaks out. This is Richard Overton. 109. 109. Trying to make run 10. <laughs> I think I'll make it. Yeah. I hope. So do you think the world is better now or back then? Or the world is a lot better, but 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 is some things are getting a little different. People are getting a little stronger. Getting a little meaner. <laughs> shooting the police and they're killing each other and they think having fires every night and now that didn't happen when I was in the country. Mm. That, that wasn't happening. But none of it happening. Well what about during the civil rights era? Uh, were you were you involved in that at all and how was that here? Well back in the old days a lot of us couldn't meet with each other, but the only way a lot of them got together is when the war started. That changed the situation, changed a lot of them. Because when you were left here and go to the army over the water, fighting for this, this country, well, you got to get together. You couldn't separate. But just think, all the soldiers that Uncle Sam had, and how in the world did I can get to be the oldest? <laughs> I can't believe that. Some, it's, now, some didn't do man didn't do it, did he? I don't think so. <laughs> Sometimes I stop and look back and say, what in the world behind me? See what pushed me. She, she, she would have kept me going. <laughs> well, I, I read somewhere that you like coffee with whiskey in it. It's, it's good medicine. That's what I'm taking it for. My daddy taught me how to do that. So what do you think about the Second Amendment? Do you think that's important for us nowadays, or do you think we should do away with the right to bear arms? No, I think everything getting something. It was better here for a while, but it seemed like it's kind of changing a little bit. Mm. Yeah. yeah. I don't know whether, I mean, if the people change it, I don't guess God would change it. He don't go the bad way, he go the good way. But some of these things are getting pretty bad in places. And a lot of people coming over here and you don't even know them and they, like here a few days ago, some fella stopped out there with his hat down and wouldn't let me see him. And some fella stopped up there working on his car on the dash and wouldn't let me see him. Every time I look at him, they would drop the head. And there were some people that didn't belong here, but they, was, they found out that I've been in this situation for some time and they know I live by myself. And so they think I got some money. I kept on looking at him and looking at him. Every time I look at this stuff, yeah, he would die down on this car. I look back there, he put, there's no way in the car, he put his hat down. So I said, oh, well, ain't going to worry me, because I just got up and come in and got my gun. <laughs> well, I'm going to push it, said I. I said, now, y'all just keep, keep, do whatever you want to do. <laughs> then I called, well, I had called the police long, I called him several times out here. 
and tell them what I got to do because people are getting funny. He said, I know it. He said, people are getting kind of funny. He said, the way to do it is one, come on your steps out, out there and you'll walk. Well, if he come up to your walk and want to say something to you, you can talk to him. But if you want to come up on your steps and you don't know him, you tell him to wait. So you can't come no further. I don't know. You can't get close to me. See, some of them get close to him and grab you. See, and some of them are stronger than you are. Mm -hmm. And so you don't take that chance. He said, if they come up on the step, if you want to kill them, be sure you kill them because they'll come back and kill you if you don't. Do you think the world is, is more free now? Yes, well, it's getting, it's, the world's getting better. Yeah, it's getting better because th well, things is now, some year things go up and then, some year things go down, so mm -hmm. you just got to live through what's coming. Well, before we go, is there anything you want to say to the veterans, to the young veterans, or to the young people out there? You've got a lot of wisdom, so. Yes, and you tell them I'm still, I'm still one, I'm still their friends. And they want me to go back to Washington. I been, didn't want to go, but they want me to go back again, talk to the president. So I go back and see what's going on, but I want everything to be lovely. I don't want nothing to be <laughs> crossed up where I don't yes. like. Well, what do you, I mean, how does that make you feel, being the oldest living World War II veteran? I just can't believe it. I, I, I can't feel it. I just can't believe it. But it, see, man ain't got to do with it. You got to go up and ask God about that situation. Yeah. Now, I don't know how long I'm going to live. I'll let them live five more years. I'll let them die tomorrow. But man ain't got no thing about it till I'm dead. <laughs> but God got to know when you die. He know when you're leaving and know when you come. Mm -hmm. And so that's the man you better watch. Yeah. And thank, and thank him for giving you that, <laughs> all that good life, and I had a good life. And guys, that's just a very small selection of the reports that we put out every single day. You know, whether it's the nightly news, the Alex Jones show, the special reports, all the other things that get up on YouTube, the iPhone videos, this is all the stuff you guys see if you go to the Alex Jones channel on YouTube or you go to prisonplanet.tv. That's right. And I would definitely encourage people to become a member of prisonplanet.tv because uh, it helps pay for the, the flights to send these guys all around the country and yeah, keep exactly. them uh, with the, the best equipment that we can get, you know, without breaking the bank. Because some of this Yeah, we don't have can... a, a million dollar satellite truck. We are doing the best with what we can. Yeah, we, we to use small like iPhones and selfie sticks and some really small rechargeable batteries that you know? well you know just the terra deck the the piece of equipment that we use to do the live streaming that that was several thousand dollars yeah you know it doesn't this stuff doesn't just fall out of the sky it's it's because of people like you out there who are subscribers to prison planet also people that watch the videos on youtube mm -hmm. you know everything helps out people who go to infowarsstore.com we appreciate all your support and we do put it back into this operation and everybody here is totally committed to what we're doing one big family yeah all right, guys, well, that's going to do it for our show tonight. We definitely thank you guys for spending your Memorial Day with us. We hope you have a very safe and productive time, and we'll see you back tomorrow night.